Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. John here, Stunt Star Builder Dream. So, I wanted to do a two year, 60,000 mile review on the Jeep Gladiator. So, that's right, two years, 60,000 miles. We bought her brand new, less than 100 miles on her, down in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're currently at Carolina Beach. And so, Carolina Beach is actually the first place I ever took Ruby off road. So, we're at the beach, enjoy the scenes, we're doing some flyovers. Being said, roll the video. Hold on. thinking about buying a Jeep Gladiator, which one you should buy. I've got my opinion on which one you should buy and depends on what you want. So other than a 79 series Land Cruiser or 73 series Land Cruiser, you're not going to find another mid-size pickup with solid front axles, front and rear lockers, and a manual transmission anywhere inside the United States unless you have one imported. So to me, I wanted a manual. So this is a 3.6 liter manual. I do have some gripes. I wish it had a Hemi option and I wish it also had a diesel option, but you can only get it with a 3.6 liter. When I bought Ruby, I wanted a red one, but you know, uh, she had such a good price on her. I really didn't care about the color as much as I wanted a manual transmission. A few of the initial modifications we did I always tell everybody that has an off-road vehicle, and this is purpose-built for off-road. First thing you need is a winch. Now, I went with the ARB bull bar. There's an install video on that, as well as the uh, Badlin 12,000-pound Apex winch. Hasn't let me down yet. I haven't had to use it for myself, but we've uh, pulled out several other trucks with this. And even though it's a Jeep, you'd be surprised. I pulled out 1500s, F-150s, and other trucks along the way. Um, actually right here on the beach I pulled that F-150 that was buried up to its frame so very capable winch very capable vehicle don't underestimate the size and weight of this vehicle it basically has a Ram 1500 rear suspension long arm kit from the factory the Rubicon suspension is very soft a few of my complaints are um, at speed it's a little too soft so with the rooftop tent as soon as I got that I started experiencing a little bit of death wobble about 75 miles per hour on the interstate. It actually happened so bad one time a semi truck came flying by me and the uh, traction control came on. So while we're talking traction control, one of the first things you want to turn off when you go off road is the traction control. Uh, disconnect your sway bar, depending on how you like to ride. If you're running four service roads, I like to leave my sway bar connected. When I get into the more technical stuff, I use my sway bar disconnect. The lockers, it's got front and rear lockers. I've hardly ever used the front locker unless it was something where I was starting to get a little bit bogged down. Usually the rear locker is good enough, so if I were going to build another Jeep with a Hemi and one tons, I would probably go with the Mojave just because of the reinforcements of the frame. But for the most part, the Rubicon, to me, I wanted one since first generation, and when I went to go buy a Jeep, that's what I went with was the Rubicon package. And so, very capable from the factory. We've done a lot of mods, so, Again, first thing we did, we did the winch and front ARB bull bar. After that, we did the snorkel. Underneath, we've got the super stock air intake from AFE. I used AFE a lot. I trust their products. Um, kind of balances out any potential loss with the snorkel. Um, she ran stock height for a long time. Uh, last December, we put the Clayton lift on with the Rancho shocks. I've got a full install video on that. Since uh, I did the lift, I've been running the uh, 371350 R17 Toyo MTs. These are 10 ply E-rated. They'll run on my 3500 just like they run on this thing. 
they have great wear life and as you can see in the back the sidewalls do flex so don't believe all the hubbub about sidewalls not flexing as you can see it's flex out there we're only down to about 19 psi you can also run these at a higher psi so that's a good thing these uh max out at about 55 or 65 psi i went with the steel wheels i had some av wheels i've stuck on it at first before i did the suspension these are the same offset these are actually tactic wheels from uh quadratech and they're a great wheel um along the way the uh circo rack up here i've had that thing for about 20 years I uh, put it on here, the Yakima crossbars with the gutter clips. You can't find many gutter clips out there. Um, this is mounted on the rear hatch. I know I can't put more than 200 pounds up there. So this is for bags and light gear, um, mostly for kayaking. Uh, when we did our overland trip, I had a duffel bag with some gear up there. I try to keep the weight on the back. Um, I have to take, when I take the tops off and if I'm full in the back, I'll throw the tops up there. Um, you can still remove the tops with the rack on so uh, don't buy into the racks that you know lock down the front is the advice I give you um, let's go back a little bit so when we talk powertrain options so I went with the manual um, the 3 liter eco diesel that probably gets twice the gas mileage of this one so my buddy uh, Steve down at Adventure Off-Road X he get, runs about 20 23 miles per gallon in his uh, Gladiator with 37s it's the uh, eco diesel model he has had some troubles for my jeep it's never been back to the dealership the only thing i've ever done is change the oil and there's a few how-to videos on that um, knock on wood she's uh, doing great um, only regret i have is actually the extended warranty because she's performed flawlessly now some people go out there they flog them they dump the clutch i drive the engine hard i use the full rpms um, i've hit the rev limiter a couple of times on accident uh, probably about four times, but it's there for a reason. It keeps you from redlining and destroying your engine. Um, the 3.6 liter, I think it, it's got a bad rap, um, but it's a reliable engine that Chrysler, Fiat, Dodge, whoever you want it, owns them right now. Um, it's been an engine that they've used for several years. It's pretty dependable. Uh, there are a few bad apples out there, you know, if your engine's built on a a Monday or a Friday it may not be as good as some other engines but 3.6 liter by far is a good engine so my Rubicon is the most basic Rubicon you can get it's got a manual transmission it doesn't have any of the sensors for cruise control it has front and rear lockers um, there's been some complaints with the uh, the signaling that if you get some mud over here it shuts everything off and you know brings on a little light on your mirror which can be very annoying uh, if you plan to do a lift kit or anything i highly recommend you get a taser um, the taser is pretty cool you can put on a light show if you do a parade or something uh, factory rockers i haven't done anything underneath it's got factory skid plates i don't ride it hard i don't go crawling over boulders i do a lot of long distance travel over you know dirt roads and poor service roads and a lot of beach travel so i love coming to the beach i love uh driving in the sands i don't go crazy where i'm jumping it so you'll see some guys that split their uh, dana 44s and i'll tell you right now not all dana 44s are equal the dana 44s the m220 and m210 underneath the jeep gladiator are phenomenal um, they're very comparative with the axle shaft size to a Dana 60. Dana 60s have larger ring and pinions. Uh, the Rubicon, for some reason, they went with aluminum uh, outers. So I know I'm getting a little technical there, but aluminum outers. Um, so what you'll see if you go watch the Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion video, uh, you can actually buy a truss kit that welds in, reinforces the C's, and if you throw a set of uh rcv axle shafts in there you know probably two thousand bucks compared to seven eight thousand dollars for a crate axle you can have a very robust and reliable axle now i've run this thing stock steering linkage uh no issues uh for sixty thousand miles uh with the 37s i've had them on at least 10 months now the four to one transfer case 
is super low. So just know if you go out with your Rubicon, off-roading with your buddies, you're gonna be going a little bit slower than them. Uh, don't be tempted to run this thing in fifth gear. Third is good. Fourth is pressing limit because that chain is cycling constantly uh, when you're in four low. So don't use four low unless you have to. That's a nice thing about automatics. And actually Dodge Chrysler Fiat came out with a good automatic. Uh, the guys with the automatics, they love them. But me, I want to feel connected. Uh, the last trip, I hardly used my brakes. The engine does all the braking. That's a great thing about manual. So if I don't want to crawl up something, crawl down something. Um, as long as you've got good throttle control, this thing will crawl. Um, first gear is ultra low and slow. And even with the, uh, I'm still running the 14 gears, 37, 13, 50s, R17 Toyos. The stock steering is held up. The, uh, I did go to the clay and off-road suspension last December. Uh, there's a full install video on that. And uh, I'm running the Rancho shocks. They're tried and true. They're not the expensive Falcon shocks. Um, but they've been, you know, thousands of miles since I installed the lift kit. Uh, it's probably been at least 20,000 miles that I put on since Christmas just because I've been able to go so many more places with the Jeep as it is and feel confident doing it. Um, underneath, there's not a whole lot. It's stock um, skid plates. We did go with the Flowmaster exhaust just for the, uh, the tone to get that out from uh, crunching up in the rear. And so uh, stock Rubicon rails. We've got the, uh, the fenders. You can fit a 40 on here. Uh, you definitely want to go get the R-Tech truss and beef up your axles if you're thinking about 40s. I think if I was going to do it, I'd probably do the R-Tech package up front and maybe a 60 swap in the rear. You're going to go to one ton axles, spend the money, get the Currys, get the Dynatrack, get the Danas, America's Most Wanted axles, uh, the crate axles. You can build these. Go watch JK Gear and Gadgets. He did a full build with a uh, uh, old F250, F350, Dana 60. Um, you can do it. Um, you could also run a 14-bolt uh, rear if you wanted to, but for the most part, now Ruby is how she is. I almost jumped up to 40s, but then when I was looking at the parts list, I'm going to stick with 37s a little bit longer. So if you're just getting into overlanding, uh, some people say the limb risers are a gimmick. I like them. Um, I got a crack in my windshield two weeks after I bought the thing. Still haven't fixed it. It went over the windshield. I'll do a laminate um, coating on there. I don't wash her as much as I probably should but she's a fun travel adventure vehicle. The uh, snorkel, I uh, drowned a vehicle when I was a teenager, stupid um, going through a big hole. So uh, on my YJ, I put a snorkel and then I knew I wanted a snorkel with the, uh, the JT as well. We talked a little bit about the roof rack. Um, so last summer we went with the CVT Mount Washington and this is almost the size of a queen size bed. This is a larger version, the smaller version. It's a little more like a full, um, the rack. We've gone through a couple of different racks. We had the Thule rack at first. I wanted the, the ability to carry more weight as well as uh, mount some stuff on the sides. Just get it out of the truck bed. Give me some more options so on this side we got the uh fake max tracks budget friendly this rack was actually off marketplace um this rack i've had for probably 20 years was recycled the arb bull bar about 700 bucks lights um, about 100 the ox beam controller less than 200 um the awning this is a overland vehicle systems awning and I actually picked this one up off Facebook Marketplace as well. I did pay full price for Rotopax. I went with the three gallon. Um, that will get you out of the woods, get you to a gas station in most cases. We got the diesel for the diesel heater. And this water, I talked a little bit about it in my last video. I just need a spout, but I hardly ever even use this thing. Um, I mainly use my Coleman. So around back here, we did uh, get Ruby a birthday present. And so, this is the new Iceco VL75. Um, I could have gone with the APL55 or the ARB Elements for the price point. I went with this route. We're going to try it out. Um, it's weather resistant. You can't soak it 
and you can't leave it in heavy rain but for the most part probably the biggest fridge you can get and still fit in the back if you step up to vl90 you, you're limited on some of your options this one i've got a slide but what i'm thinking about doing and we're probably going to get back into doing some woodworking and projects is eventually i want to build a a storage compartment here like a drawer that pulls out on top of that i want to slide and we'll get rid of the toolbox we'll build a space up there for when we do our batteries and i want to have a dump area back here so we'll probably build this the right way and um, i don't want any rickety stuff on here because it's got to travel thousands of miles but i want an area where when my recovery equipment gets dirty i want to be able to just dump it into a container area back here where it's not mixed in with other stuff same thing with my tools being all the way at the front they're hard to get to um, it's a real pain when you got to unload the truck to get to your tools so the tools i gotta figure out something else and getting the fridge almost drives that um, i plan to keep the vl75 hopefully no issues it's got a five-year warranty with the uh, c-comp presser and so it should be great um, we're carrying a 20 pound propane bottle still cooking with the bass pro um, grill but for the most part i like it um, future upgrades i want to do tire carrier on the back and i want to get the harbor freight jack out of the back i want to be able to remote mount that when i go on the trails the harbor freight jack has uh, done awesome i use it all the time whenever i got a project i especially use the extra height when we did the lift kit for the most part we really um the harbor freight goes everywhere with us because sandy soil like the beach here you can't use a normal jack so the skid plate on the bottom lets you take and use it i've seen these things go 200,000 miles plus and so we're just going to see how it goes and we're just going to keep racking up miles on her if we do trade in i would probably go with the eco diesel but for the most part ruby has performed phenomenally so a few other mods to come in the future hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you would smash that like button smash that subscribe button ring the bell so you get the notifications and keep coming back for more once again you guys get to come along for the ride i get to share my dream with you but the true purpose of this channel is to help motivate inform and inspire you so you can get out there and start building your dreams